<laughs> All righty, so we are in. <coughs> You're gonna have to redo that. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Recoil Outdoor. So we are in. This ben is Recoil and... Indoor. Yeah, technically it's Recoil Indoor. So we're in Ben Peace and West Peace's shop um, at Peace Performance here in Moore, Oklahoma. So. But TJ has been here getting kind of wrapped up and tidied up, um, kind of the loose ends. Um, the Predator carburetor, we got got it all tuned up. We actually went to Cars of Coffee, but of course you can't go out and test something without breaking it. So on the way back from Cars of Coffee, the tra or the TK started acting up exactly what it was doing last time. So I think the uh, little plastic tabs we put in there actually wore back out or a couple of them moved or something, but... It's stuck in low gear now, so we're just going to leave it in low gear, and we're going to tidy this up, and we're heading to Crossbar this weekend to go wheel. So we are actually going to go hit the trails. We've got some good friends coming up. Um, Second Chance Overland is coming out to meet us and wheel a little bit, and then uh, we're just going to go out and enjoy this weekend. So it's been a lot of work to get up to this point, and we have been, like, this Jeep alone has been kicking our ass, not on top of the waggy and planning for dirt fest all the logistics of making everything happen so uh, shout out to everybody that's been a part of this it's been a huge chore to get to this point and we can't do it without the guys that have been here from day one so um follow along as we continue to tidy this tj up tonight maybe we'll get this thing started and actually rip it around a little bit out here before we put it on the trailer and load it up to go to crossbar this weekend I just cut that out. <laughs> um, just 69 that. 80, 86 that. <laughs> same tomato, tomato. Tomato, 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 potato, dude. It's all the same. <laughs> anyway. Oh. Hey, oh, buddy. Good, man. <laughs> what? Oh. oh. <laughs> So we've had, when I rewired this Jeep, God damn it. Um, everything worked great besides these tail lights and to adapt the turn signal and everything back here to all this setup, we used a, um, like what you would use to get trailer lights to the back of your vehicle to like a four pin plug to, con to bring everything and make it break were also work as a turn and there's just been some this side like that side works fine this side will the break and the turn and the tail are like backwards and i've been i've troubleshooted it once now i'm on my second time it's kind of kicking my butt um <laughs> hopefully we figure it out just because it i don't know i feel like an idiot right now um and uh yeah, kind of over it, but keep working on it.
you know what overlanding is? Sorta. Sorta. What's your definition of it? Uh, this is like a big topic that a lot of people talk anything about. Anything with but... a vehicle, basically. Okay. Easy enough. What about you? I mean, that I'd say that's pretty good. I mean, well, uh, as, definitely. I what I pulled is glamping. <laughs> <laughs> well, gl glamping. I think glamping's a little spending way little too different. much money to do the same thing as somebody else. <laughs> like overlanding, to me, is using a vehicle to get to like a remote area to camp and camping either from a tent or the vehicle itself whether you have a rooftop tent a s sleeping setup in the back of the vehicle or just external tent lay the seat back you know it's so like my definition of it is like I like to think is overlanding is like a vehicle assisted adventure. To me, it's like, yeah, you're camping, but it's like just hiking whatever. with a vehicle. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Hiking yeah. with the vehicle. <laughs> but it, it's crazy because I was talking to some guys about it the other day and it's like, what is overlanding? And there's so many different definitions of overlanding. Yeah. Like some people just want to go out and camp. Some people just want to go hiking. Some people want to go bike riding, mountain biking, whatever the case may be. But it's like the conversation we had the other day. What's a trail rig? True. There's yeah, so many definitions of a trail I think rig. It's just open up, open to interpretation. Yeah, I'd agree. So, <laughs> enough of conversation. Let's uh, let's dive into the TJ. So, uh, comment down below what you think overlanding is. Yeah, write down below what your idea of overlanding is because there's a lot of different conversation topics of overlanding, and we're curious what it is. Um, it, I feel like it really popped up during COVID. I was actually overseas during COVID, so I didn't get to see everything pop up. But when I got home, there was a ton of people out doing this overlanding facade. So um, tell us in the comments what you think it is. I'm really curious um, what others think overlanding is. So, but with that said, let's dive into the story of the TJ and do a walk around. So I saw this TJ on marketplace i don't know back in august and <clears throat> so i started recoil a long time ago like a year or two ago and i've just been doing it kind of behind the scenes and i wanted to expand right well i ended up totaling my f-150 and i had a chunk of cash sitting there and so i started scrolling marketplace as everybody does and i came across this jeep it was in West Virginia. Um, got some details about it. It was cheap enough. And it had everything I needed in order to put somebody behind the wheel that did not, may not have ever been off-road before. So it was upgraded to the point that it would be reliable enough to go get on the trails and put anybody behind it. Um, so I drove to West Virginia a turn and burn trip, a 37 hour trip, drove there, loaded it up about an hour and drove all the way back home to Oklahoma. So the energy drink they got me through that was Rip It. So naturally the name of TJ is Rip It. Um, also ties into our military background quite a bit. Yeah, so as Seth, Seth said, it ties into our military stuff quite a bit because when we're overseas, Rip It is like the OG energy drink. Um, oh, shorty cans? Yeah, little short cans of Rip It. You can get them out of the uh, refrigerator or the cooling box whenever you're going through the DFAC. And so when I saw a, a Rip It on the way to get the TJ, I was like, that's freaking perfect. And so Rip It was the energy drink on going to get this TJ. So um, Rip It, if you can sponsor us, sponsor us it'd be freaking awesome. Um, so anyway, the TJ is basically a beater trail rig that we're able to put anybody behind that if it bounces off of a tree we're not really going to care as much um unlike the the waggy or uh seth's jeep where if it bounces off a tree or hits a rock or rolls then we're really going to be you know um pretty it's gonna be pretty detrimental so this one something happened to it and nobody's attached to it we can rebuild it keep going so um let's start at the front so it's got a Badlands winch. This is one of the older style Badlands. Um, it still works. It's 12K, 12K winch. We're going to take the cable off of this 
I don't like the idea of cable. I, in fact, I hate it. Um, it. It's more of a safety factor. So I'm going to go to a synthetic rope and uh, change all that out. It's got a wireless winch controller. Um, the previous owner did do CJ signals, so it's not a CJ. It is a, Archer. I believe, a 98 TJ. Um, he just put the CJ uh, turn signals in it. And then the axle is out of a Bronco, so it still has the, um, oh, what do you call it? Seth, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. What's the uh, suspension set up on this? Um, uh, out of the Bronco? Not torsion bar. Um, uh, Three quarter strut? Radius arm. Yeah, radius arm. So it's got, it still has radius arms. Um, the wedges inside here basically are just a rubber, uh, it's not a poly rubber, but just it, it flexes quite a bit. A lot of guys put um, the energy suspension red bushings in there. That actually limits you more off-road because they don't flex as much. So we still have the stock ones in there. They don't squeak or anything, and so they flex a little better. Uh, previous owner did all of this work. We The only thing we've done is transmission and, and the carburetor and the wiring. So transfer case and, and transfer case. So the crossover steering is put on by previous owner. We're going to change it up a little bit. The PC or PS, PSC uh, hydro assist is actually in kind of an odd position. So if you look right here, this tab should really be flipped over to where the PSC ram is more straight in line, or this bracket comes up. Because as of right now, whenever you go to turn, it actually pushes this bar out when you go turn left and then pulls it in when you go right. So you actually want to basically put that in line with your most straight across link. So we've got to change that out. Um, the track bar, we're going to change out the bracket. It's got a heim up there on the stock bracket. We're going to rotate that heim up vertical so that um, your axle plane and everything, it's, it's right in line where it needs to be. Um, and it also keeps your bolt from just falling out. So that's the front end. Um, we've got Bilstein shocks on it. Nothing super fancy, just stock Bilsteins, whatever they are. I don't know, 5100s probably, 5165s. Um, <clears throat> and then, so the engine, the whole drivetrain came out of like a 92 model Chevy 1500. So it was a TBI 350 with an MV 3500 and an MP 241 Chevy transfer case, all driver drop stuff. Um, we ended up taking the TBI setup off of it because it was too much of a pain, a pain in the butt to deal with. It was OBD1, it didn't run right, the filter was messed up, and the carburetor or the TBI setup needed rebuilt anyway. So it was just easy to convert over to carburetor. And we had this Predator carburetor that Seth actually had laying around that he wanted to try. And we're like, screw it. This is a freaking awesome carburetor. Let's try something different that not a lot of guys are doing. So we went ahead and did the conversion to a uh, HDI distributor and carb conversion. And then the transmission had a cracked bell housing. So we swapped that over to an MV4500. So it gave us an actual, uh, the granny gear was a deeper first gear. So we got a lot more crawling power on the, on the bottom end. Um, that helped out a ton. Um, what else do we have? 40 inch treps. These are DOT treps. These are not true stickies. They're now, they've been regrouped probably three times. They're down to cords and, uh, probably they're, they're on their last, last leg. So we're going to use these up until we decide to go with probably some KM threes possibly. Um, we have 17 inch race lines and slugs in the front. The axle also has 513 gears and a Detroit locker in the front. Um, what else? We have a CJ7 dash. So you can see some of the wiring right here. We've actually done, we've redone all this and we're gonna put another panel here to cover everything so it's watertight and everything, but we're still in the wiring midst of fixing all that stuff. So that's why this is still open. Um, Notice the TJ dash is gone. This is a CJ7 dash that we've put our own cluster, our own uh, switch panel in. Um, 
We will also be switching out the steering column. So steering column is the original TJ steering column and it's junk. It's not a tilt column. It's too far out and it looks hideous. And I hate the feel of that steering wheel, honestly. So we're going to do a quick disconnect wheel with a tilt steering column and probably just custom make that. Um, seats are Corbu seats. These only have probably three runs on them, but um, they're kind of tied in right here with this crossbar and it's really um, ate a hole in the seat. So hopefully we can just push these back and this doesn't continue to eat away at the side of the seat. Don't have to get them recovered before long. Um, Mastercraft harnesses, thanks to Jeff. Full custom cage. There's a couple things on the cage we want to change out and actually clean up and make better. Um, one, for safety. And two, there's a couple things that just need added and some that need taken away. So we'll, we'll be doing that. Um, Fabtech armor and rock slider. And something that you guys, knowing the TJ industry, um, might look at kind of funny is we're actually leaf sprung in the rear. So a lot of guys will actually see that this is backwards. Some people will go, well, most people will go coil overs if they're going to this extent. But for whatever reason, the previous owner did leaf springs and we have a backbone, which is right here, this truss right here, backbone nine inch with 513 gears and Detroit locker. Um, that's basically the, the basis of, oh, we've got Mosher chromolys in the rear and RCVs up front. Um, so chromoly axles, front and rear, and a moto built fuel cell. 300 m in the front um so that's the basis of the tj this like i said this is a jeep that i bought solely for the purpose of putting veterans behind so that is the goal with this one this is not something that like yeah you'll see me willing it quite a bit soon because i need to test this we need to test this in order to make it safe to put other people behind that may have never been off-road before so um once the waggy's done, I'll be in the waggy. That'll be my main rig. But this is something that we're trying to make as safe as possible and as fun as possible for somebody that's never been off-road before. So we'll be going out and beating on it and testing it and, and putting it through its challenges and hoops so that we can make it worthwhile. Um, like I said, it was, a cheap, it was a cheap Jeep. And we're just trying to basically budget build this Jeep as much as we can and make it, like I said, as safe as possible. So... That's the full walk around of the TJ. Um, follow along on the build on this one. We've got a ton more stuff we're going to be doing to it. Full roof, soft top, um, soon. And then we're going to do a tunnel cover in the back. Um, we're actually going to rip the armor off, do some other stuff with that. So just stay tuned for more progress on it. Right now we're budget building this and just trying to get it back on the trail. And then we will be running a lot more stuff in the future. So definitely stay tuned for that. And then mocha dirt fest. Um, so we've got mud and mocha coming up on the 24th of February. That's at Lost Lakes Adventure Park in Midwest City. Um, this this event is for everybody. So whether you're a veteran or not, come hang out, network, see everybody, check out all the rigs. It's also a chance for everybody to sit during our meeting. And actually chime in and give us some comments and uh, see what we have going and see what we can um, maybe we can use some of your ideas and, and stuff so we are 100% transparent this is your time to see what we have going on um, and then we also in March March 16th I believe we have a potluck evening camp out mud mocha going on the saturday evening of the 16th so definitely come hang out um we'll have bonfire the pro shop will be open for anybody that doesn't have food um but yeah come hang out have some fun and then we have dirt fest coming up on may 4th and 5th you don't want to miss that one this is our big annual event this is the one that we are sinking all of our eggs into one basket making it just as cool as we can make it um Definitely something to look forward to. Obstacle course, vendor row, overlanding, um, treasure hunt, like a bunch of stuff. So definitely come out, hang out with us and see what that's all about. Um, like, follow, subscribe, and share everything that you can. We'll see you all in the next one.